Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 14 developer beta four. This is out to all developers on iOS 14 supported devices and came in at 624.6 megabytes on my iPhone 11 pro max. It was similarly sized on my iPhone SE, my iPhone seven and my 2020 iPad pro 12.9. They ranged anywhere from 400 to 600 megabytes. Now, if you're looking for the public beta, usually that will come out either later today by the time you're watching this video or the following day. Now, alongside iOS 14 beta four, Apple also released iPad OS 14 beta four watch OS seven beta four TV OS 14 beta four, and still no public beta versions of watch OS or Mac OS big Sur. And there's still no beta four of that. So maybe by the time you're watching this video, there will be, but as of this time, there's not, let's take a look at the build number and then talk about what's new. You can see the build number is 18 a five, three, four, two E and we're getting closer and closer to finalizing what will be in this beta and getting everything as far as all the bugs fixed. So in this particular update, there is a small modem update for the 11 pro max and other devices on the iPhone 11 pro max. It's updated to 1.50. 0.23. And then also with this particular update, Apple is fixing a lot of issues and resolving them. And there still remains known issues. So there's 39 known issues that still remain and there's 24 resolved issues. And those things include quick action menus over widgets, for example. So if you're pressing and holding and you're using haptic touch or 3d touch, the quick actions will work properly. Also the weather widget should be updating to real time now. So it should match whatever the temperature is, although it didn't there, but Apple has said they've fixed that picture in picture. FaceTime should work properly now. And also trying to install updates should work properly. Now, some people are having issues installing from iOS 14 beta three updating to beta four. So you may need a computer if you're having that issue. Now, one of the issues they've resolved is 3d touch. So if you're using 3d touch on your device and we're kind of upset that they removed it last time, well, it's back and works as expected. So you'll see that we have, let's go over to 3d touch here. So you'll see 3d touch is on. It works properly. You can use it all over the OS and it works much better than haptic touch. Now, as far as other features that are updated, well, there's not a ton of new things, but there are a few. So if we go into settings, for example, and we go back to our main settings page, scroll down, we now have exposure notifications. Now this is off by default. In fact, there's no way to turn it on if you go into the notic notification settings. So it says exposure notifications are off. If you turn them on, your public health authority can notify you of possible exposure and you'll only be able to turn them on if you've installed an app that can use it. Otherwise, there, otherwise there's no way to turn it on. Now this is a little bit different than what we had with beta three and beta three. It's actually under privacy. So there is no separate setting, but in Instead, you would go to your location services down to system, and then now you have exposure notifications. Apple's made it its own separate menu. So hopefully that clarifies it for a few people. It's off by default, not on by default, like it was before, and it should work properly if you're using an app. Otherwise it's off by default. There's no way to turn it on. Now there is a new widget in this particular update. And so if we scroll up right here, you'll see we have a new Apple TV widget. So if I press and hold, we'll wait for it here add and then scroll down, you'll see we have a new TV widget in all three sizes. So if you want to use that, you can, and it's a new widget that's here. So it's nice that they keep adding all of these widgets. Now, in addition to the Apple TV widget, they've also made a change to the shortcuts widget. So if we press and hold, we'll add a widget. If we scroll down to our shortcuts, you'll see that we now have a single size shortcut widget. So we'll select this one. Let's move it over to this screen here and you'll see that it's blank. If we set it on this screen, if we press and hold on this widget, we can edit the widget and select a singular shortcut to have it run. So here I'll select battery manager and I've shared some of these shortcuts before and you'll see now it sticks. If I tap on this widget, it will run the battery manager, activate, deactivate fast charger, ultra low power. And so you can set any widget you'd like here in the previous version. You could not do that. So you'll see that if I scroll to this page, you only had the option for this size and you could not edit the widget. So you couldn't set what you wanted specifically for one singular widget. So they've updated that. Now, as far as search, they've actually improved this from beta three. So if we go ahead and pull down using spot, Spotlight search and type Apple. 
compared to the results we got with beta three, they're much better. So you'll see it gives us apps at the top, then some of our contacts. And as we scroll down, you've got different files that contain that and all sorts of other information. So everything from Apple news on beta three, we didn't have any of these. We have full search throughout apps, our contacts and everything else. So it's pretty nice that they've put that in there and made search a lot better. Now, also on beta three, when you deleted an app, it was slightly different. So for example, if I go into YouTube here, press and hold to delete the app and then tap on remove app, you'll see that they've changed it from remove from home screen to move to app library. It seems like they keep changing this over and over, but they've been updating it and that's what we have now. So move to app library. If you hit delete, you can uninstall or remove the app. And so they've made that small change from beta three. Now on the iPad, there's a slight change as well with the widgets. I noticed there's more of a bug. So all of the same updates apply to iPad OS, but there's more of a bug on here. If I go to add a widget, so let's press and hold on a widget. And you'll notice that I have the weather widget back as well. So that's back on the iPad. But one thing I noticed is a problem. If I add a widget, then maybe I want to say, add the new Apple TV widget. And maybe I want to add, let's say this size, we'll hit add widget and it's working properly now. Now, nine times out of 10, when I would add a widget, it would actually add it in the size smaller than what it's showing. So I would go to add this size and it would give me a one size widget. If I added the larger one, it would give me this size. So if you're experiencing that bug, be sure to report it in feedback, but thankfully we have this weather widget back and I'm glad to see that on the screen now. So it's good to have that back on the iPad if you were missing that. And with that, those are the only changes in iOS 14 beta four or any of the major changes. Anyway, I looked all throughout, I couldn't find anything else that was obvious, but those were the major changes. And this particular update does feel like it's performing well, but before I talk about that, let's take a look at battery life because battery life on iOS 14 beta three was pretty terrible for me. So if I go to battery, you'll see my battery health is at 96%, which is normal after this amount of time. And if we go to the last 10 days, let's take a look at yesterday. I only had three hours and 53 minutes of screen on time, four hours and 53 minutes of screen off screen off time. And you'll see that I used about 75% of my battery. That's pretty terrible battery life. Normally I was getting 10 to 12 hours with iOS 13.6. So I would expect that sort of battery life, hopefully to get a little bit better with this beta, but Apple doesn't focus on battery life this early on. Usually you'll see the day before, Maybe I would have gotten eight to 10 hours of screen on time based off what I had, but it's always hard to say with this particular update. I did notice the phone was quite warm when I first started it back up, but then it now feels cool and it seems like it's performing very nice. The scrolling and everything is nice and fast. When I go into settings, for example, you'll see everything smooth here going into different apps. I always use music as an example, but you'll see everything's loading quickly and performance on older devices seems to be pretty good as well. So on the iPhone SE, for example, I did play around with this just a little bit and we'll wait for music to load here. It's the first time I've opened music so I could show you in real time and you'll see it's a little bit stuttery on the older hardware, but it should be pretty good for the most part. I did go into Minecraft. You'll see it will reload here. We'll wait for it just a moment and we'll resume and you'll see we're back in. And this gives us an idea of what frame rates can be expected. So I'm sort of stuck in a forest here. So let's see if we can get out of here. There we go. I'm out of the forest. So now I'm out and this gives you an idea of frame rate. So it does seem to be pretty smooth overall for an older device. So I wouldn't expect this to affect performance negatively in any way. And also there's the translate app and everything else. So everything should be working as you expect. Now let's take a look at the Geekbench scores. I did run them on all of these devices using Geekbench five. I actually ran it a couple times on the iPhone 11 pro max because it was warm at first, like I said, and then it cooled down. So I scored 1,333 for single core, 3,394 for multi-core. That's pretty good compared to the history. So we'll take a look. You'll see the two that I ran today as opposed to the last couple versions. So yes, it's a little bit slower with multi or single core, but a little bit faster with multi core. So I wouldn't expect any performance differences, but hopefully we do see some better battery life. Now I'll show you all these different devices. So you have an idea what yours should be performing at if you're checking out benchmarks as well from left to right. I have the 2020 iPad pro 12.9. 
then I have the iPhone SE, the original iPhone SE, then the iPhone 7, followed by the iPhone 11 Pro Max. So if your scores are anywhere around these numbers, expect performance to be the same. Now, Apple also released a new iMac today. It's not a redesign, but it has a big spec bump and can go pretty expensive, over $8,000 if you load it out, but it has some pretty impressive specs and it may replace the iMac Pro. Now, also iOS 13.6.1, I thought would be out by this point already, but maybe we won't see it until later this week or maybe even next week. Usually Apple pushes one of those new updates to the public to sort of fix bugs, whether that be for security issues or features. But normally I would expect that out by now. So any day. It's hard to say what Apple's doing, but hopefully we'll see that pretty soon. If you found any other features, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below, and maybe I'll do a follow-up video if there's a bunch of other ones, and of course give you a shout out if you showed me that feature. Now, as far as this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.